That's, not, that's everything right there. He came and did it just for me. That means you as well. And we can praise him and thank him for that. What, what an awesome gift he gave for all of us. For the world, the Bible says. God gave his son for the whole world. And if, if we would simply accept the gift, he would come into our lives and change our lives. I'm going to invite you again to, to turn to the book of, to the Gospel of John, the third chapter. We're going to continue our discussion, if you will, our, our if you will, focus on Nicodemus and Jesus in the third chapter. Um, I think the title I gave it was The Senior Citizen Preacher and the Millennial Rabbi in Dialogue. That, that's the title I gave it. I want you to... Follow me in this because I, I, I pray in the name of God that God has given me a, a unique revelation concerning this. But before we do that, let's, let's talk to our Father and ask Him to help us out, all right? Let's, let's pray. Father, we ask that the wind would blow, that the Holy Spirit would move uh, in His own direction, uh, in His own way, that there might be a, a transformation that takes place right where we are, wherever that may be. We need him to move upon each of us. And we pray the anointing of the Spirit will fall upon 
your children and all who are listening that that we might receive what we need from God right now. We are available. We are ready. Have your way, dear God, now. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to stop again and ask you to please mute your phone. We are hearing some background noise, so that means that someone has unmuted the phone. So please mute your phone. And while they are unmuting, they're muting their phone, I invite you to, to look at the, the third chapter, and we'll just read a couple of verses. The third chapter, verse 10. We'll just look at verse 10 and 11 right now. So listen to this. Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. Now, this is why I want you to hear from if you if you're able. And I said this to you last week. The amazing thing about Nicodemus, at least to me, is that while speaking to the young rabbi, the I call him the millennial rabbi, Nicodemus was able to simply be quiet. Now, the, the, the question that comes to my mind is what caused this intellectual, and, and from what I can read and what we can read together, into Nicodemus was a man of great power and passion. He was a man who knew the word of God, and he was a man who knew what the word of God said. And in, in fact, Jesus acknowledges that he was a teacher. But the amazing thing to me is what happens when Jesus, if you will, calls Nicodemus out. You say, well, Reverend, what do you mean by that? Well, if you look at that 10 verse, Jesus says to Nicodemus, are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? In other words, you mean to tell me you all of this and you don't have a clue? And, and the, the amazing thing to me, and the, the thing that blows my mind is that Nicodemus said nothing. In fact, this is the thought I had in my mind, his silence is deafening. You say, what do you mean by that, Reverend? I'm saying to you that when Nicodemus could have come back at Jesus and, and, if you will, debated him, he was silent. But don't, don't miss this. The next thing, Jesus, Jesus didn't just stop there. He didn't just call him out on the fact that he was supposed to be a great teacher. He said, if in the 11th verse, most assuredly I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. So Jesus is saying to Nicodemus, we tell you the things we know, and you reject it. Now, I don't know about you, but I probably would have come back with a, with a, if you will, a word for Jesus to let him know that I know what I'm doing, and he doesn't know what he's talking about. You know what I'm talking about? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. My point I'm trying to make for you is this, and I, I pray this is relevant to you, and that is that even with the words that were directed to Nicodemus himself, he never said a word. To me, that is amazing. And, and so I wonder, why would a man of such knowledge, a man of, if you will, self-giftedness and such influence not say a word? And I, it came, this came to my mind. I pray you can, you can feel it and maybe you can connect with it. And that is that Nicodemus did not come to teach Jesus. He came to be taught by Jesus. Anybody get that? He did not come hear me, to speak to Jesus. He came to listen to him. And I want you to hear that because, because what that says to me about Nick is that he had a humility that allowed him, even with his status, to humble himself so that he can receive, hear this, what God had for him. He was able in the moment, in spite of who Jesus you know, may have been, he didn't really know the whole story. He was able, if you will, to humble himself and not come back at the rabbi, but he was able to receive and listen to what Jesus had to say. I want to challenge you in the moment, my brothers and sisters, to be, what is it, slow to speak and quick to listen. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? I want you to hear this because often because we have an answer when an answer is not necessary we miss what God wants to share with us. Hear this if you will sometimes because we're so quick to respond that we miss a message ordained just for us. So 
as we, as we listen and, and know what Nicodemus is doing, what we see is a man who is able to stop and listen to Jesus. And the, and the thing that came to my mind is that one of the greatest issues and challenges of the church today is that we are, we are having a difficult time simply listening to what God has to say. We are having a difficult time listening to what the Bible says. I know I, I, I was reading in some situation where for someone was actually rejecting that idea of the Bible says, but my friend, without the scripture, we have nothing. The Bible is the foundation of what we know and believe. And we, if we don't have that, we have no way to understand and know who God is. And the thing I want you to hear today is that it's time for us as the church of Jesus Christ to listen. When I, when I thought about that, I, I remember the passage in the book of Revelation. I'm going to ask you to turn to that. In the second, in the second and third chapter of Revelation, there was something that was repeated over and over again. And if you turn to the second chapter of Revelation, you can see it with me. And I think it's relevant in this moment as we talk about a man who was able to listen to a young millennial rabbi. And in Revelation chapter 2, you'll see these. And, if, and many of you know that in the second chapter, Jesus, the Son of God, is speaking to the churches of the first century. And as he's speaking to them, at the end of every, if you will, time of speaking to the churches, he makes this statement. Listen, listen to this. Hear this now. He said, he who has an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Listen to this. Every, and hear this. Every time he speaks to one of the churches, at the end of what he says to the church, he says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. What is my point I'm trying to make? I'm saying to you and, and myself, it is so important that we begin to listen, stop and listen to what God is trying to say. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, I'm sick of pandemic. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody sick of pandemic? I don't know about you, but I am done with the pandemic situation. Amen, somebody. Anybody want to say, yes, right, Reverend? I, I am done with it, but my, the challenge that has come to my spirit is what is God saying as he allows this thing to come upon us? Whether you can see it or not, believers are losing their lives as much as unbelievers. Wow. So my question is, what is God saying to us? I was talking to a preacher yesterday, and it was an interesting moment, going into Costco, of course. <laughs> Help me, Lord. <laughs> and he made a statement that, and he said, God is, is allowing this to come upon us. And you know, there's that debate out there. But he, he, he made this point, and I like this, and I, I, I'll, I'll give him credit in a moment. This is Bishop Shelton, right? He said, if the devil was doing it, he would, have do, he would do it every year. <laughs> I, I like that thought. That the devil had the power to do this anytime he wants to, he would do it and destroy the church, right? Yeah. And I like that thought, but that's another one to deal with, right? But my main point is, God is allowing this to come. And the question I ask to you, can we be like Nicodemus? In the face of uncertainty, can we simply begin to listen? In the face of confusion, because I don't know about you, but at times I find myself confused about what is happening because I know a God who can change all of this. I, I know a God who has the power to end all of this, and yet here we are even on a Sunday morning. That in spite of what we uh, believe about the power of God and we know how great God is, here we are in pandemic mode. Is it maybe... A moment for the church of Jesus Christ to simply stop and begin to listen to what God is saying to us? Is this not a moment for us to begin to stop and, and be still, as the scripture says, and know that he is God and that he is still the authority and the one that's in charge of this thing? Is, it not, is this not a moment in the history of this country and of the church for us to begin to stop and say, God, what are you trying to say to me? And I, uh, okay, let's expand that. God, what are you trying to say to St. Paul? Yeah. Amen. All right, how about Winchester? Yeah. Yeah. How about Frederick County? What about the church worldwide? What is God trying to say? And I don't know about you, but I want to find out as quick as I can. Yeah. I want to be able to listen so attentively that, that I am beginning to move in a direction that says, I hear you, God. And I want to challenge you as a believer 
no matter what denomination you are, no matter what church you're a part of, to begin to simply ask God, Lord, what are you trying to say to us? We want to hear from you. Amen. Amen. And I believe if we'll begin to turn our hearts like Nicodemus to Jesus and begin to seek what he wants and seek his will and seek what he desires for us, I believe we'll begin to see some changes. I don't know when this pandemic is going to be lifted. No one does. I just know I'm sick of it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm ready for a change, right? The amazing thing about Nicodemus, Jesus got in his face and really confronted him about who he was, and Nicodemus simply listened. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Some of you need to take some time and, hey, I'm, I'm probably in that group, is to simply sit down and just listen to God. In your personal life, take some time to listen to God. You know, we, 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 most of us do our praying on Sunday. Help me, Jesus, right? How about beginning to talk to God on a regular basis, right? I mean, talk, I'm not talking about being like me. I'm talking about being like you with God. Anybody get that? Being like you with God for yourself. Because the thing I've learned about God is he, he's always speaking. He's always, God is always engaged in giving information because he's God. The question is, are we available to receive what he's saying? And I love this passage that we're looking at today because I see, I see a, it going from a dialogue, meaning a, a discussion between two, to a monologue. Anybody with me on that? It goes from the two men, God in flesh as well, talking one-on-one -on -one to Nicodemus stopping and Jesus simply speaking to him. I don't know about you, I want God to speak to me. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to make sure I'm available so I can hear what God is saying. Yes. I don't know about you, but I, I want to position myself in, the, in front of God that he's, he's letting me know what he wants me to do. I, I need that, and I pray you need it as well. But let's go back to, to, to the, um, the monologue, because it's, it's transitioned from dialogue, discussion between two, to a monologue, a message to one. Did y'all get that? From a dialogue, and I love this, from a dialogue, men, two men talking, to a monologue, one man speaking. And I want you to look at verse uh, 12. Jesus, again, in his face, verse 12 says, If I have told you earthly things and you not believe, how, <laughs> how will you believe I tell you heavenly things? In other words, if you, don't have a, if you don't have the ability to understand the things of this earth, how can you understand the things that are not of this earth? Now again, for me, it's time for, for some discussion with Jesus, right? In my mind, it's time for a little debating, uh, if you will, a dialogue. But the man Nicodemus doesn't say a mumbling word. And for some people, these words that Jesus is saying are fighting words. Somebody say amen to that. Sometimes people come to us in a way that is not, hear this, pleasing to us. And we want to fight instead of listen to what God is saying. I want you to understand that God doesn't always come with flowery and beautiful words. Hello, somebody. God doesn't come all the time with things that make us feel good and happy. Hallelujah. Sometimes God comes to shake us up. Sometimes God comes to rock our world. He's done it. I know he's done it for me. I don't know. He says, the Bible says, whom the Lord loves, he what? He chastens every son, right? My point, I'm trying to tell you, sometimes God gives you a word that will shake you, but sometimes he'll give you a word to give you the direction that you need. Amen. Nicodemus hears the words and says nothing. Look at verse 13. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who comes down from heaven. That is the son of man who is in heaven. He says, I'm the only one that's beating their back. <laughs> Y'all get that? I'm the only one that's been there back. I'm the only one that has had that, if you will, experience of being in the very presence of God and being here as well. That's an amazing statement. And I would have had about 10 questions on that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Look at verse 40. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So Jesus... Speaking to a theologian who is Nicodemus, pulls out a, a, a passage out of, at least a point out of a passage 
in the book of Numbers. And I, I looked at this, so I'm going to ask you to turn to it if you have your Bible. Numbers chapter 4, because some of you say, what? A serpent? Look to a serpent? And some of you are co completely confused about it. So let's take a moment to look at that. I'm almost done. But in Numbers chapter 21, I believe my brain is serving me well over that. And then the fourth, fourth verse, 21 verse 4, we read these words. If you're there, say amen in the, in the sanctuary. Y'all got it yet? I'm going to give you a moment because some of you are struggling to find the book of Numbers. Yeah. It's at the front of the book. Amen. <laughs> Numbers uh, chapter 21, beginning at verse 4. I want you to hear this so you know what Jesus is talking about. Then they journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And listen to this. Do not miss this. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And I want to stop and address that issue. It says that the people were discouraged. And I, I want you to think of, use your, if you will, spiritual mind and understand something about the Jews. At this point in time, they have been delivered from the bondage of the Egyptians. Listen to this. Don't miss this because this is major in my mind. They've been delivered from the bondage of the Egyptians. They have been set free. God has sent them a, a deliverer to guide them in their freedom. And God has even, come on now, think about this. He has also guided them through the Red Sea on dry land. And they just have a few days walking in the wilderness. In fact, God does something else amazing for them. There's a cloud by what day? Some of y'all know your word. And a pillar of fire by night, right? In other words, there's, there's always God directing them. And then on top of that, food stops falling from heaven. <laughs> Oh, you, I mean, you, gotta, you gotta get the picture, my friend, that no, not only is God guiding them, but God is feeding them on the desert. And they, all they have to do is get up in the morning and look up. Oh, what, what would we do if that happened to us, right? In other words, they are in a position of blessing that none have ever experienced before in the human plane, right? They're just getting all their needs met by God, right? And it says that as they're going along the way, they become weary. In well doing, anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. They become so, they so become so, if you will, focused on the mundane and that which they're doing every day that they don't remember what God has been doing for them. Right? Anybody been there? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Look at that fifth verse. This is this is this is amazing. This blows my mind when I read the fifth verse. And the people spoke against no. God, God and, and against Moses. <laughs> Now think about that for a moment now. God is blessing them. God is feeding them. God is taking care of them. God has delivered them from the great oppression of the, of the Egyptians. And what do they have the nerve to do? To get in God's faith and say, we're sick of you. To get in God's faith we, and to say, they are, they are no longer grateful for what he's done. We are done with this. I say that to you because sometimes we get into a, a mind where we operate in that mindset as well, right? You'll, if you'll be truthful about it, that we, 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 we have been blessed by God so much that we begin to take God for granted. Thank you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That we have been given, God has given us so much and blessed us so much that we have missed how great our lives are. Yes, yes. Here's a challenging word for you. I, my, my mother... Listen to this. My mother did a DNA thing. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And in the DNA information, it showed that I could have been in, I think it's Cameroon. Y'all know what that is? I don't know. <laughs> I just know that it's in Africa. And I know that it has, the, now this is the last statistical data I have on this, and that is that there's 50% poverty there. I, I can't even imagine that, right? And if we... Many of us, if we begin to do our DNA search, we will find that the possibility that we wouldn't even exist. Amen. Wow. Amen. You ever thought about that? That there's a possibility that the blessings that we know here, we would not have those blessings because we would still be somewhere in Africa. I'm not, I'm not throwing down on Africa. I'm not being bad about Africa. What I'm saying is sometimes we have been blessed so much by God that we take it for granted. And we don't know that when we wake up on a Sunday morning, we need to give him praise. That, that when we open our eyes on a Monday morning, we need to bless the name of God. That when we find ourselves in the United States of America, in a sanctuary like this, in a time of worship, it's time to thank God. I don't know who y'all, some of y'all probably not feeling that, but I want you to understand this, that God has been so good to us. Yes, he has. 
I'm not just talking about St. Paul. I'm talking about the, everybody in the, in the United States of America. They said the average poor person in America has a car and two TVs. Oh. Anybody get that? Mm. That's what they say. The average poor person has a car and two TVs. And we call that, that is American poverty, right? That is not worldwide poverty. Y'all know that, right? And what, am I, what is the point I'm trying to make? That is that we have seen the blessings of God in ways that we can't even begin to imagine. And the Jews were in a situation where they were so blessed by God and yet they rejected his blessings. Wow. And look at what it says in the rest of that fifth verse. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Are they, are they, have they lost their minds? Saying to God, to God's face, as God has a cloud hovering above, why have you done this to us? Mind-boggling, right? That's, that blows my mind when I think about it. And then, and then something, <laughs> wait a minute, let's, let's read the next one. But there is no food and no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. In other words, we don't want none more of that bread. I don't care whether it's coming from heaven or not, we don't want no more. We're done with you, God. We're done with your provision. We're done with what you've been doing for us. We're sick of it. You might not do it that way, but in reality, the things you do in your life say to God, you're sick of him. You might not use your lips to say it, but is your life saying it to God? Oh, come on, somebody. Don't, don't, don't hate the messenger. Receive the word that you need, right? Are you not living a life that says to God that you don't like him that much? They say, to, they say to the, in the face of God, we're sick of what you've been doing for us. And here's what happens to them. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. And watch this, y'all. Watch this. Don't miss this. I'm going to have to end the message here. Look, watch this. And the Bible says, therefore the people, verse 7, therefore the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. But we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he will take away the serpents from us. Did you get that? When trouble comes, where do they go? I've been amazed at how many people who don't know God talk to God when trouble comes. Have you ever, you ever noticed that? That people who don't know God when they need God's help come to God. Hey, but how about this? How about Christians who've been acting like they don't know God come to God because they need help? Anybody get that? So they come to Moses. <laughs> they come to Moses and ask Moses to do what? To pray for us. So Moses did what? You see what Moses did? The Bible said, so Moses prayed for the people. In other words, in spite of what they had said to him and how they rejected his God, Moses still loved the people. Anybody get that? No matter, even, even though the people have rejected him outright, he still, he still loved them. And, 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 and he, he immediately, and I love this, he did not stop fussing them. You, you know you shouldn't have said that about God. You shouldn't have said that. He didn't get into any of that dialogue with them. He simply turned his face from the foolish people and turned his heart to God. Anybody get that? He turned his eyes from the foolish people, the people who were operating in wickedness and simply began to speak to the God he knew that had mercy and grace for them. Yeah. Yeah. Every now and then you need to stop looking at your crazy family and just begin to turn to God and talk to God about it. This, I'm, I'm being serious with you in a moment. Sometimes we simply need to stop fighting with them and allow God to fight the battle. Amen. Anybody want to handle that? Sometimes we need to turn away from the foolishness that's in our families, that's in our house, and just turn to God so he can help us. Anybody want to feel that? The challenge is that we are so often engaged in the foolishness with people that we miss the fact that God has a remedy and an answer to what we're dealing with. And so often as we are engaged in our calamitous situations that we miss the fact that God has already brought about an answer simply, we simply need to ask him. Amen. And we miss his blessings upon our lives because of that. And so I love this. So Moses prayed, verse 8, Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fire of a servant and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. Wow. Is that, is that heavy? He says, 
And this is grace and mercy, y'all, being showered on the people, because God, this whole, don't miss this, God immediately responded to Moses and told Moses what to do. And what did Moses have enough nerve to do? <laughs> I love that. Moses was connected to God in such a way that he immediately began to do what God had told him to do. And so Moses, verse 9, made a bronze serpent and put it on the pole. And so it was, if a serpent had been anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, life was there. And what I need you to hear is, I'll just say this to you. Keep praying. Don't give up. I know it feels bad right now. I know it feels like God is not not working like you need him to or like you want him to, but let's, listen, keep talking to the Father. His time is not our time, right? His, his ways are not our ways. We, we need, as believers, to learn to simply wait on God, but never give up on God. Amen, somebody? Keep talking to him and let him do his thing. You do your thing, but let God do his thing. Don't be God in your family's life. Somebody say amen to that. <laughs> let God be God. Let God work it out. So Jesus says to Nicodemus, who knows this passage in the Old Testament, he says to Jesus, if anyone does that, looks to me, the Son of Man, eternal life. Did y'all get that? Back to John chapter 3. We're almost done. Back to John chapter So now, we, now you know what I'm talking about, right? So you say, I've never seen that, Reverend. <laughs> but there it is. And what I need you to understand is that Jesus was given a, a powerful illustration that Nicodemus knew about that he could understand immediately. And, and what do we need to understand from this? And I'm taking you back to the, I think, the 14th verse in John chapter 3. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. In other words, he's talking about his crucifixion. Are you there? Can you feel that? That's what he's talking about. He's talking about him giving, offering his life. That whoever believes in him, meaning the one who's lifted up on the, on the cross, should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life, Everlasting life eternal life. And, and the last point I need to make is that in all of this monologue, Nicodemus is hearing it. And he's simply listening to what God is saying to him. And I need you, believer, Christian, old, whatever, whether you're senior or not, you need to start listening to God. That's all I'm saying to you. Stop Listen to what he has for you, because there is a possibility that you're going to miss his greatest blessings simply because you chose not to listen in the moment. Nicodemus listened, and God did some amazing things in his life. You know what? I, I did a little a quick uh, search in the, in the Bible. You only see the name of Nicodemus two more times. This, this is uh, interesting. I, I invite you to check it out. I think it's in the seventh chapter, the 50th verse, where Nicodemus is uh, defending Jesus. Anybody get that? Tell you the boldness of the man. In the midst of the, those who hated Jesus, he was defending Jesus. I think that's about the, the um, 50th verse in the 7th chapter. The other, thing, other time is he is helping Joseph of Arimathea to, if you will, take the body of Jesus from the cross, but not only that, to put it in the tomb, but not only that, to put spices on his body as well. That's the Nicodemus that we know about, but we never hear another word from him. He never, listen. As far as we know, based on the Bible, he never speaks to Jesus again. But believe me, I think a change took place. Amen. I pray in this moment as we share that the change is taking place in your life. That you have so listened to God that you know that if you trust in the Son of God who was raised on that cross, that you will gain eternal life. And I pray in this moment that you will, will continue to seek him and want to know him and, and even in spite of what you believe about you I need you to believe this about him he gave his life for you yeah. did you hear that? no matter what you believe about you that does not matter what matters is what you believe about Jesus yeah. and he gave his life for you and I invite you on this uh, Sunday morning to not miss this opportunity let the Spirit of God have his way with you right now that you might give your heart and your life to him. And I guarantee you, if you really do it, your life will never be the same. You will get the eternal life that you need. In Jesus' name, amen.